forced to create eye details as how he used malicious compliance to get back at a rude customer. Some background I used to work in a public hospital's public relations, PR, department read, the department where all sorts of miscellaneous SHT and nonsense is sent to when no one wants to figure out who issues should be sent to, or just want problems sent somewhere. It was hard to manage the workload with a yes-man PR director at the helm, who typically acceded to most requests for help especially after other staff tacked on their go-to flimsy excuse if it's related to a patient, so PR should handle it. Or flattery you guys are really good at dealing with this, we just mess it up so it's for the best if PR takes over. Besides the PR department, there was a medical case management department that dealt with more difficult cases involving legal, highly complex medical, or multidisciplinary cases. Due to the nature of our work, sometimes cases were bounced between the two departments. This case was partially dealt with by me, but the malicious compliance is on my coworkers' end. The cast. Cynthia, Medical Case Department Director. Joel, Medical Case Department Staff. Sarah, Finance Department Staff. Me, a friendly PR wage slave? Mr. Nutty Patient, Retiree with No Income. This case happened almost a decade ago and does not take place in the United States of America. Mr. Nutty underwent surgery, everything went well, and he left the hospital after a few days to recuperate at home. There, he combed through the bill, called the hospital about an apparent billing error, and was transferred to my line. For confidentiality and simplicity, let's call the item in question organ transplant. Mr. Nutty said that he didn't have an organ transplant, and only had a couple of medical items inserted. At this point, he was still fairly pleasant. I assured him I'd call him after checking. As this was basically a non-emergency case, the finance department and the surgery department took about a fortnight to gather the details and figure out what happened. In the meantime, Mr. Nutter had started sending emails by the end of the first week, asking when he was going to get a refund, which I strangely enough had no recollection of promising. Every time he sent an email, company policy dictated that I was to get in touch with him. By the time finance gave me all the details, I could recognize his email address and phone number when they appeared on my screens, and he was getting rather testy. I contacted Mr. Nutty and told him that he was correct, there was no organ transplant. The organ transplant was actually a billing code name for a package that usually consisted of a lot of items that were used in his surgery, including the medical items inserted. The surgery department knew of his financial situation and, to help him trim costs, essentially gave him a package deal instead of billing him per item, which would have cost him much more. This triggered something in Mr. Nutty and he went ballistic, shouted that a public hospital running on taxpayers money should be more honest, that it was the principle rather than intent that was important, and demanded that we change the bill to accurately reflect everything that was used in the surgery, no exceptions. Even telling him that it was likely to be much more expensive did not deter him from following his principles. I was still relatively new to the job then, so I informed Mr. Nutty that I would have to speak with someone else to see if his request could be granted, and ended the call. It was at this point Cynthia came up to me and asked if I was alright. She was passing by as the conversation was ending, and hung around as I was obviously upset and shaken. I shared what happened and she very kindly told me to pass the case to her department as they were more familiar with such cases and it would be pretty easy. I didn't hesitate to say no as I was sick of Mr. Nutty by then, and called him a day or so later to tell him that Joel was taking over his case. Thereafter, I did not hear anything about this issue from Joel, Cynthia, or Mr. Nutty, and forgot about it until. Five years later. A major reorganization took place four years after the case came in, Cynthia and Joel left, the medical case management department was closed, the PR department merged with several others and now manages even more shit. One fine day, Sarah, from the finance department, calls me about a patient who claims to have spoken with the PR department staff and medical case department staff of your about a billing error that was left unresolved, although she couldn't be sure since the patient was insisting that spoke to Cassandra, Gordon and flying a birth ID and that he had never heard of Cynthia, Joel or me when Sarah tried to confirm if they were talking about the same staff. After an archaeological excavation of the archives and patient records, we discover that it is Mr. Nutty calling about the same issue, with a twist. Apparently, when Joel reached out to Mr. Nutty, he tried to explain that he would be facing substantial losses if we were to follow his instructions in itemizing the bill. Mr. Nutty simply would not take no for an answer and scream preached his ears off. Mr. Nutty also threatened to go to multiple government departments to tell them about the hospital's illegal actions, and apparently later did go to at least a couple. Here I have to admit that Joel was a much more professional worker than me, and was typically a calm, steady rock who could take a lot of rubbish and still walk away without wanting to commit murder. 
or at least not admitting to wanting to commit murder. Mr. Nutty must have deliberately picked all the bad end route options he could, and more, because I had never seen Joel doing anything similar in the four years I worked with him. Typically, when faced with such requests, Joel could, and would, escalate the issue to Cynthia with the recommendation to ignore the case or request after giving an official reply via letter. Cynthia would usually agree as long as it was a morally correct choice and there were no legal or medical repercussions. Joel did not do that in this case. Joel opted to follow Mr. Nutty's request to the letter. He told the surgery department what happened. Pissed off that their goodwill had been spat and trampled upon, surgery department agreed with the changes and looped in finance to make sure every single item used was listed, individually. No more packages or cost-saving efforts for Mr. Nutty. It turned out that the organ transplant was not the only billed item that was actually a package deal, so Mr. Nutty's bill came up to nearly double his original cost. Mr. Nutty was not happy when Joel returned with the shiny new bill. He refused to pay the bill, and continued to harass and threaten Joel off and on for about a year or so, but eventually went quiet. Back to the present day. I asked Sarah why Mr. Nutty was calling years later, and apparently it was because the debt collection agency had found him, Mr. Nutty had moved, and did not update his particulars as he skipped his medical appointments as well. At the hospital, if bills go unpaid for some time, they go to a debt collection agency, which relies on the information provided by the hospital system. After all these years, Mr. Nutty finally came back for a checkup, and had to provide updated details, the debt collection agency caught wind of this and started the collection process again. Somehow, I managed to dig into my well of by then nearly non-existent compassion and asked Sarah if there was any way to reverse the changes. Sarah cackled and pointed out that because of the universal health coverage available, Mr. Nutty's medical bill was initially 80% covered, in part thanks to the particular package codes, like organ transplant, the surgery department used. However, after his request, only about 30% of his new, more expensive bill was covered. The best bit? All such bills go to the government, and only one change is allowed, unless the hospital admits it was their mistake, in which case there may be penalties. This is to prevent hospitals from changing the bills willy-nilly, and to save administrative costs. Amazingly enough, one of the governmental departments Mr. Nutty complained to about our illegal actions was, the same department in charge of handling universal coverage for hospital bills. So not only did the government department in charge know about his not too intelligent demands, they also knew that we had tried to help him but change the bill to comply with his request. And, there was absolutely no way the hospital was going to take a penalty on Mr. Nutty's behalf. It was with great, unbridled joy that I made the final phone call to Mr. Nutty. He didn't recognize me, but I had the extreme pleasure of informing him that I was the first staff who spoke with him five years ago, didn't he remember, screaming at me? No? Oh, not to worry, it was a long time ago. Oh, it's not that it's a long time ago, you just thought it wasn't worth remembering all our names, because we're just customer service staff, you say? Haha, <laughs> alright. After that, I didn't bother with further niceties or small talk and went straight in for the kill, telling him that we could not change the bill again as it could only be changed once. Surprisingly, he didn't flip it once and even asked for the reasons. I explained how we, Sarah and I, dug through our archives and the sequence of events. There was a long silence and just as I was getting worried about whether he had passed out, Mr. Nutty erupted, shouting about it being a pack of lies. We were dishonest, he was a retiree with no money, how could we do this to him? Why did we make the changes if we knew it was going to be more expensive, how was it even possible that the revised bill be of a higher amount? It must be a mistake. Etc. By now, I was a seasoned staff and would normally have ended the call after three warnings. My dear readers, I did not do that with Mr. Nutty. I waited very patiently for him to run out of breath screaming and cussing and in the lull, I simply said. The bill was itemized as per your request, sir. Thank you for watching this video and we will see in the next one. Bye.